Okay, good morning. I have here an addition or additional examples for normal probability distribution. So first, before uh, we compute, okay, for the examples, let us have a review on how we are going to use our calculator in finding for the distribution or the area under normal curve, okay? So first is, is to set up your calculator into stat mode. That would be mode 3, 1, okay? Then press on, then shift 1, then 5. That would be the distribution. Then you can see, okay, this. Okay, we have there P. That's 1 is P. 2 is Q, 3 is R, okay? So, we just need this 3, no? So, what is P, what is Q, and what is R? Okay, so, in your normal curve, if you need to get the area from this point when Z is 0 or at the center, okay, to the left or to the right, okay? So, you have there, this is your Q, Okay, so from this point to the right or from this point to the left, that will be both Q. So you need to choose two, number two. Then, if you need to find the area from this point, okay, to the right, then that would be R. If you need to find the area from this point to the left and that is your then you need to choose r that's number three then if you need to include the other half of the normal curve or let us say you need the area from this point okay to the right then that would be p and also from this point to the left that would be p you need to choose one Okay, then. Okay, so let us uh, solve the first uh, example. Find the proportion of a normal distribution that corresponds to the each to each of the following sections. Okay, first is if Z is less than zero point twenty five. So zero point twenty five is positive. So it's located where at the right. Okay, please remember in our normal curve. Okay, so in our normal curve, we have there, positive is located at the right and negative values is located at the left. Okay, but in, um, uh, if you are going to input your value of Z in your calculator, it should be the absolute, absolute value. Okay, so here, Z, uh, uh, if Z is less than 0 0.25, so it's located at the right, okay, of our normal curve, and then, we need the area at the left of 0 0.25, and that would be P of 0 0.25, that is 0 0.59871. Then, next is, if Z is greater than 0 0.8, so that would be, okay, 0 0.8 is located where? Since it's positive, it's located at the right, and you need the area greater than 0 0.8. So that is at the right of 0 0.8, that would be R. Okay, R of 0 0.8 is 0 0.21186. Okay, so for our third example, we have here Z is less than negative 1.5. Okay, so negative 1.5 is located where? At the left of our normal curve since it's negative. So, we need the area less than negative 1.5, so that would be R, okay? To the left of negative 1.5 is R of 1.5, against absolute value of our Z, we have 0 0.066807. Then, Next is Z is greater than negative 0 0.75, okay? So, again, locate our Z value we have there. 
negative 0.75 is located where? At the left of our normal curve. So we need, since it's greater than the area at the right. So it means that we need a P of 0 0.75 that is 0 0.77337. Then, next is we have there the area from z negative 0 0.25 to 0 0.25. So, where is negative 0 0.25? It's at the left of our normal curve and positive 0 0.25 is at the right. Since they have the same z value, we have there 0 0.25. So, we just need, okay. So, we just need a Q of 0 0.25, that is 0 0.098706 times 2, okay? So, that gives us 0 0.197412. Okay, so another one, we have there P of negative 3 is less than Z is less than 1. So, that's the area between negative 3 and positive 1. So, it's both, it, it is both Q. So, we need to find the Q of 0.3 plus the Q of 1. That is, Q of 0.3 is 0 0.11791 plus the Q of 1, that is 0 0.34134. That gives us 0 0.45925. Okay. Then, next we have P of 1.5 is less than Z is less than 2.75 or the area from 1.5 to 2.75. So, we have there, okay, we have there 1.5 is located where? 1.5 and 2.75 is both where? It is located at the right of our normal curve since it's both positive. So, what do you need to do? You need to find first the Q or the area of 2.75, okay, and then subtract the area or Q of 1.5, okay, for you to find the area from 1.5 to 2.75. So, we have there the Q of 2.75 is 0 0.49702. Minus the Q of 1.5, that is 0 0.43319. That is equal to 0 0.06383. Okay, so another example problem. For a normal distribution with mean of mu is equal to 80 and a standard deviation of sigma is equal to 20, find the proportion of the population corresponding to each of the following scores we have there okay first scores greater than 85 so since we are given the row score of 85 we need to convert it to z score and again as you still remember z is equal to the formula for z is equal to z is equal to x minus mu over sigma x is our row score mu is our mean and sigma is our standard deviation. So you have there 85 minus 80 divided by 20 is 0 0.25. And we need the scores greater than 85. So greater than 0 0.25. So it's me it means that we need to find the area to the right of 0 0.25. And of course, that is R. R of 0 0.25 is 0 0.40129. Okay, another example, scores less than 100. Again, we have there our uh, x is 100 minus mu of 80 divided by 20. That gives us 1. So that is less than 100. So that's less than 1 since 1 is what? Positive. Okay, so it's located where? At the right of our normal curve. So we need to find the area. Okay, where at the left of 1, that is P of 1, it gives us 0 0.84134. Okay, 
So for the scores between 70 and 90, okay, so we have there 70 minus 80 divided by 20 is less than Z is less than 90 minus 80 over 20. So our Z scores are negative 0 0.5 and positive 0 0.5. So let us again draw or locate it in our normal curve. So it is where? Okay, negative 0.5 is at the left and positive 0.5 is at the right. So since we have the same Z score, Z scores, we can just get the Q of 0.5 and then multiply it by 2. So, Q of 0.5 is 0 0.19146 times 2 is equal to 0 0.38292. Okay. So, another problem. A true-false test has 40 questions. If a student is simply guessing at the answers, what is the probability of guessing correctly for any one question? Okay, so as you can see, this problem is what? Under normal approximation to the binomial distribution. Okay, so here, the probability of guessing it correctly is, of course, since it's a true-false test, we have there the probability of guessing it correctly is 0.5, of course, and the probability of guessing it incorrectly is also 0.5. As you still remember, P plus Q is equal to 1. Okay, so the probability of getting, guessing it correctly is 0.5. Next, on average, how many questions would the student get correct for the entire test? Okay, so again, in binomial, okay, how do we compute for the mean that is mu is equal to NP and the standard deviation is equal to the square root of NPQ. So what is our mean? That is 40 times the probability of success. That is 20. And for the uh, standard deviation, we have there the square root of 40 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, that is equal to 3.1623. Okay, so what is the probability that the student would get more than 25 answers correct simply by guessing? Okay, so we have there, of course, the continuity correction in binomial, in the in nor normal approximation to the binomial, we have there. Okay, 24.5 from 25, of course, that would be 24.5, that is minus 0.5, okay? Minus 20 divided by the standard deviation of 3.1623, that is 1.42. And we need the area, okay, that is, or the probability of getting more than 25 answers, okay? Correct answers. We have there. Okay, the area at the right of 1.42 or R of 1.42 is 0.077804 or 7.78%. Hey, so another one. For a population with a mean of 40, okay, and standard deviation of 8, Find the Z score corresponding to a sample mean of, okay, so you have there 44 for each of the following sample cases, okay? First is if N is 4, okay? So remember under central limit theorem, we have there a given N. So we'll be using what? The formula of, okay, this one, okay? Or you can just, or you can first get our standard error, that is the standard deviation over the square root of n is equal to 8 over the square root of 4, that is equal to 4. So we have here, then we can use this a formula, okay? So you have there z is equal to x minus mu over sigma 
the sigma is our standard error that is equal to 44 minus 40 over 4 it's equal to 1 or we have here z minus mu over sigma over square root of n we have there 44 minus 40 divided by 8 divided by square root of 4 that is 1 okay so another uh, another uh, condition is if n is equal to 16 so we have a new standard error that is 8 over square root of 16 that gives us 2 then z here is 44 minus 40 divided by 2 we have 2 or okay using this a formula again we have there z is equal to 44 minus 40 divided by 8 divided by square root of 16 that is 2 okay so another example we have here what is the probability of obtaining a sample mean greater than m is equal to 60 for a random sample of n is equal to 16 score selected from a normal population with a mean of mu is equal to 65 and a standard deviation of sigma is equal to 20 okay so again using the formula z is equal to x minus mu over sigma over square root of n we have there 60 minus 65 divided by 20 divided by square root of 16 it gives us a okay, negative 1 okay so again we need what the scores the uh, greater than okay you have here greater than so we have there the area from or to the right of negative 1 where is negative 1 it is located at the left side of our normal curve so we need the area at the right of negative 1 and that is we need to use p p of 1 is equal to 0 0.84134 Okay, so that's it. Thank you.